Hi, I'm Belinda Carley, the Director of the Institute of Personal Care Science, and I get asked a lot of little questions about balm and stick formulas and how to fix some common problems. So I thought I'd make a video to help you out. So on the screen, I'm showing you an example of, say, a formula where there's quite a few issues, but we can fix them. And if you have a look there, you'll see that we've listed out by percent weight all of the ingredients. Now, if you're not sure how to write a cosmetic formula, please watch my video on this and it explains why we write everything by percent and weight. And if you're not sure how to read a cosmetic formula, I've got a video on that too. So please give that one a watch so that you can understand how to read and write formulas correctly in the first place. So with this formula that we have on the screen, it is written to 100% by weight, but there's still lots of issues. And with this particular product, let's say that it's a really nice consistency in winter, but in summer it goes far too soft and it even goes a bit runny if left in a car or other warm place. Let's say also that it starts to smell a bit funny over time and it also develops some hard grainy little balls in there. It gets a bit of a grainy texture over time. So how can we fix this? Well, the first thing we need to fix is we need to put in a proper antioxidant. Now, when you're making a balm or a stick product, you don't need a preservative. There's no water present, so you can't test and adjust pH either because pH needs water to be present and you need water to be present in your formula for microorganisms to grow. So we don't need to worry about preservatives and we don't need to worry about pH, but we do need to make sure there's an antioxidant present whenever we have plant oils or essential oils in the formula. Now this is tocopherol acetate. Sure, it's a form of vitamin E, but the acetate form does nothing to protect your formula from oxidation. It's a great antioxidant from the skin and there's hundreds of materials out there that are all labeled as antioxidants, but they generally work on the skin. They don't necessarily protect your formula. So the first thing we're going to do is we're gonna change this tocopherol acetate to a mixed tocopherols and this will then provide some antioxidant protection to the formula. Now, the next thing we want to address is this climate issue. So in winter, it's nice and hard, and in summer, it goes a bit soft. And while we're fixing that problem, we're also going to be able to fix that grainy feeling that forms over time. And both of these issues are related to the low melting point butters and oils in this formula. Now, if you want to understand why the graininess happens, please watch my video on how to fix graininess in butters and balms. But we need to reduce the overall amount of low melting point butters and oils in this formula. The main problem that we're seeing here is that the consistency is being built by low melting point materials. They make up 60% of the formula which means in winter when it's cold, around 15 degrees or less, the product will set quite firm. But as soon as that temperature starts to go up around 20 or even 25 degrees, or even in a warm room or a warm area, this product is going to start to melt. So we need to reduce all of these low melting point butters and oils to a combined total of 10% maximum in the formula. And by keeping them at 10% combined total, I could go from really hot parts of the world to really cold parts of the world. And the consistency of my balm or stick is going to remain pretty much the same. So we're going to need to reduce these. And if you wanted to keep all of them in your formula, we could reduce them in a ratio so that they total out at 10% maximum from all sources. Now that little grainy formation that can happen will also commonly happen from your shea butter and your coconut oil in particular. So we might decide in this case to really reduce the input of either of these materials, both of these materials or remove one completely. And by reducing the amount in this formula, it's going to be more dispersed and we make sure that it's mixed homogeneously which means the chances of that graininess forming or even being noticed if it does form is significantly reduced. So we've fixed quite a few problems with this formula already, 
But now that we've reduced those low melting point butters, let's say that it just doesn't set hard enough. What are we gonna do about that? Okay, now we need to take a look at our waxes. Now at the moment, we've got a lot of hard waxes in this formula. So simply increasing our hard waxes is only going to give us another problem and that is either brittleness or crumbling. When we have a lot of only hard waxes in a balm or a stick product, the product will set in a very crystalline manner. And because they're hard waxes, they are subject to breaking or brittleness. So what we really need to do to fix this is to use our hard waxes because they'll put a lot of consistency into the product and make it nice and hard for us. But we also need to introduce some flexible waxes. Now I have a video where I go through various natural waxes and you can see the impact that the different waxes have in a formula. So what I'm going to do to fix this product is I'm still going to use quite a bit of hard waxes. This is going to give the hardness and consistency, especially if I want to stick. But I'm also going to introduce some flexible waxes. And what these flexible waxes do is they stop the product from just crumbling or breaking with a little bit of impact. And this is really important the harder we want our product, like a stick, we need to make sure that there's hardness, but we need to make sure it has some flexibility so it doesn't just break or snap if some sort of pressure is applied. And this is especially important, as I mentioned with a stick, if it gets wound up, we don't want it just breaking for the consumer. But if I only had my flexible waxes, I could find it simply doesn't set hard enough to ever be a stick. So I need to work with a combination of the hard waxes and the flexible waxes to get that hardness just right. Also, if I'm using a bigger diameter stick tube compared to a skinny stick tube, I'm going to need to play with the consistency a little bit more. And it will often take several samples of adjusting your hard and flexible waxes just a little bit until you get it just right. So if you're working with these types of products, especially to make a stick in a wind up tube, you'll need to be prepared to make multiple samples before it's just right. Because there's a lot of factors impacting that stick hardness. And like I say, it's using the best combination of hard waxes with flexible waxes to give you the best result. Now there's no perfect ratio because it also depends on the butters and the oils that you have in your formula. Which brings me to another point. Let's say we found that the stick or the balm was feeling a little bit too greasy. How could we fix this? Well, you'll see now that we have quite a big liquid oil content. So what we can do is we can change a little bit of that liquid oil content from being all plant oils to incorporating either caprylic capric triglycerides or a light skin fuel ester like coco caprylate or isoamylorate. And what these lighter materials do is they help reduce some of the heavy or greasy feeling that pure plant oils tend to give to the product. Now don't get me wrong, it's good when you have a combination of both because just using light esters on their own, the product often doesn't feel buttery or soft enough on application. We still want it to set hard in the stick and our hard and flexible waxes are helping it set. But it's the way it feels that matters to the consumer. And the biggest impact that we can have there is through the choice of the liquid oils that we use, which should make up the majority of your formula. So what I'll do is I'll start off by putting a combination of plant oils which have a heavier, more emollient feeling and a lighter ester. And then again, I just need to play with the inputs of these two materials until we get the skin feel just right. So that's how to fix a lot of your balm or stick problems. Just remember you need an antioxidant for the formula wherever you have plant oils, butters or essential oils present. 
Please also make sure that you are sure about which are your low melting point butter or oil materials. And remember to keep them at 10% maximum to avoid any summer or winter or even travel issues with your product. And remember it's the combination of your hard waxes and a flexible wax that will give you the best consistency, especially for a stick. It's also your liquid oils that will add to the skin feel of the product. So if it's feeling a little greasy, use some of your triglycerides or light esters. But if you only have light esters and triglycerides and you find that the product doesn't feel soft enough on application, you'll find that using your plant oils gives a little bit more of that buttery or soft type of feeling when it's applied to the lips or the skin. Another thing to remember is getting some of these factors just right takes quite a few samples. So make a hundred gram samples at a time, otherwise you'll go through a lot of raw materials fast. And make sure the product sets for you in the diameter tube that you want to use. You can have a different formula to suit a skinny wind-up stick tube compared to a wider wind-up stick tube. So you'll need to make sure you check your formula with the packaging you're going to use. And you might need to alter the hard to flexible wax ratio ever so slightly if you change that diameter. So be prepared to make a lot of samples. You can't necessarily just predict and get it right straight away on paper. But hopefully you found this video helpful to identify some of the problems you've been having and some of the solutions you can use to fix them. Getting a product to set exactly as you need it in a stick form is a delicate balance. So just be prepared to make sample after sample after sample as long as you're heading in the right direction with the choice of liquid oils and the choice of hard to flexible waxes, you'll eventually get there. I hope this video has helped you understand some of the common issues with balm and stick formulas and given you some real solutions on how to fix your issues. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please leave any questions or comments below and make sure you subscribe to receive notifications about all our videos. Happy formulating.